the strike. Um, but back here, the unions would be, you know, forming. So I'm, I'm in a coal factory, or I'm in a steel mill. We've been treated horribly. We're not making enough money. We get a guy killed every month. There's a guy killed in our factory. There's guys that are maimed in our factory, and they're not cared for. You know, there's no workers' comp. There's nothing for them. We're going on strike. Okay? So Carnegie Steel, they had one guy named Henry Frick. It was, I'll get to the homestead strike. He said, oh, you're on strike? Okay. We're just going to hire other workers. Because remember, immigrants are coming all the time looking for jobs. And as they're looking for jobs, it's like, you want a job? I love a job. I need a job. I cannot work it. You know? Again, no welfare, no unemployment. Don't think in today's culture where there's, there's any net. There's no net. You don't work, you don't eat. You know who a lot of these workers were? Minority groups. Okay? Particularly blacks, African Americans. See how that now plays in the race relations. You're a scab. I went on strike to protect my job, my family. The union, the, the, work, the uh, owner comes out, or the manager comes out and says, okay, these guys are on strike. Do you guys want jobs? Yeah, I'll take the job. If you don't have a job, I'm looking across and I'm looking at the color of your skin and saying, blacks, lousy blacks taking my job. Now you, you actually created other race problems. Well, the problem with blacks is, well, nobody will ever hire us. We don't get hired anywhere. So we're always on the outside looking in. We're always in this pool of unemployed people. So when the, the manager comes and says, I'll give you a job, I'll take it. Whereas the workers like, because you took the job, you undercut our union. And you have a conflict. And so you actually have race riots. Uh, and you cross a picket line. Even today, if you cross a picket line, and they say crossing a picket line, what they mean is, be like a rat there, there's people here striking. If you cross the picket line, it means you're walking by those people. There can be verbal, there's always, there can be huge verbal abuse, sometimes physical confrontation. So you're crossing the line, which means you're taking bread out of my mouth. You're undermining my efforts to get a working wage, and I'm going to let you have it. Um, strike workers, another word for them was called scabs. You know, they're, they're scabs, so it's a, a, a you know, negative term, obviously. So opposition is labor unions. They would hire strike breakers. They enlisted the help of the government. So the courts and police often op op opposed um, unions. So just like black people, okay, former slaves, I'm a slave. I'm now free. I'm now rugging the prejudice. I'm being treated unfairly. What's my recourse? The law is my recourse. When I go to the law, I realize the judge is best friends with the guys who's abusing me. It's a rape game. Well, back here in workers, the owners and the country club they're a part of is also the country club that the judge, the mayor, the police chief are all part of. And these company work owners who have tons of money are saying, hey, you know, I think we have friends. Would you like a, you know, would you like a trip on my boat? Wow, Andrew Carnegie invited me on his boat. I mean, wow. Andrew Carnegie invited me up to the mansion. Um, I'm playing in that game. I'm with those guys. Oh, yeah, you know, we're having some trouble with our workers at the factory. You know, we have some rabble rounds. Some guys are causing, you know, just disrupting what makes America great. You know, they're socialists. And by the way, this is where socialism and communism does get its foothold. Okay? Radical policies come out of radical times. You know, so the whole Islam stuff we're going through, remember it's always the elite that have the idea that appeal to the poor and oppressed to do the idea. And the elite will do it too. But so Man, I'm a Muslim in France, and I'm living in a Muslim slum, and I'm prejudiced against here in Europe. 
and you're radicalizing, I, there's something that my heart leaps to this. Uh, well, that was workers. So you can say, hey, I want fair. I just want fairness. And I'm not getting fairness. Hey, you know, they, they, I mean, I just got hurt. They don't care. My, my buddy got killed. They threw his wife out. Ah, that seems pretty bad. Now all of a sudden you have a communist show up saying, it's the, work, it's the owner of class, right? They're, they're starting to sell you. It's these owners that are exploiting you. Who did all the work? These guys are sitting in cushy offices, making money off your backs. You're the one paying the price. You're the one in the mine. They're never down in those mines. Their families, their families eating, you know, like kings. You guys don't even have enough food, barely. You're eating soup. You're putting a bone in it for flavor. They take a bite of meat off the bone and throw the whole rest of it away. And that, you know, this is where communism comes in. This is where socialism comes in. This is where the radical. Now I'm an owner. I'm like, yeah, there's some real rabble rousers. What's the police chief and the mayor? We'll go knock some heads. Okay. And you ever go up to Jim Thorpe, um, Pennsylvania? Uh, which is odd because yeah. it's an odd name for a town. It's named after Jim Thorpe, who didn't live there, was born there. They just basically got his body and buried it there because um, he lived out in the Midwest. But they brought him in. And in Jim Thorpe, there's a, there's still an old jail there. And it's in the place they had the Molly McGuire's, which is actually a movie with Sean Connery is in the Molly McGuire's, and uh, and these guys get hung, but they're they're fighting against coal, they're fighting, but they blow up a mine. They're like nobody's paying attention to us. We're going to do things, and we're trying to be, you know, they're taking extreme measures to get their point across. Eventually, these guys get hung um, and killed. And, uh, if you go to Jim Thorpe Jail, anybody been to the jail in Jim Thorpe? There's a famous jail there. And there's a guy who put his uh, handprint, because I'm innocent. And he goes, and as he's being taken away to kill, he goes, I'm innocent, and my handprint will prove it. And he puts his handprint on the wall, and that evidently, and I'll tell you about this, they take it down to the dungeon part of the jail. That handprint's still there. They've tried to wipe, they paint over it. They've actually taken the plaster off, and they've replastered it, and the handprint keeps coming back. So it's really, it feels really great. Twilight Zone, spooky. Um, it's probably if you're down in the jail late at night, it probably, probably really would be pretty spooky. But there's this handprint there. And actually, in 2020, in one of the shows, I actually did a you know, show on it once. And, and the guy's saying, I'm innocent. And my, that handprint will never be moved because it will prove my innocence. And, and it's been there for, I don't know, 100 years or 60 years, 80 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's this case. These workers' owners. The unions are rising up. Remember, Carnegie, poor immigrant, ends up a billionaire. Rockefeller, these guys are, they're making unbelievable amount of money on the backs of workers with really no concern for the workers. The workers are saying, hey, we just want a piece of the pot. We just want a piece of the pot. It's how much of a piece do they get. Uh, two famous strikes. Two famous strikes. Let me try to finish up here. Okay, the Homestead Strike, 1892. The guy who led, uh, who opposed the strike was a guy named Henry Frick, F-R-I-C-K. The Homestead Strike, 1892. It locked out union workers. It brought in uh, strike breakers, and they hired a group called Pinkertons, which was actually like private policemen to intimidate the union, to beat up union members. And only these guys would come in with guns, clubs, and beat them to a pole. Just the same kind of stuff you see happen to blacks in the 60s. But the police are really enforced and used to enforce racism. Okay? Do you need something? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so the, uh, that host says, right, 1892, um, it ended in violence. Uh, workers, I think 13 workers were killed and a failure for the unions. It crushed the labor union. Because the government's being brought in to crush them, okay? And then the Pullman strike of 1894. Pullman strike of 1894 uh, fired all, this was a train car, so it was a train uh, against uh, railroads. 
They fired all the union workers. So sort of like the air traffic controllers. They filed all the union workers went on strike. They actually got the president to help them. So now you have the president of the United States intervening to help the company against the workers. All right, and the results, I'm doing this fast now. Results of the rise of big business and labor. One, America becomes an industrialized society, which is really what usually is the backbone. You don't think of agricultural economies or countries as dominant world players. Um, America becomes an industrialized society. America became, became an urbanized society. Cities grew. So industrialized, urbanized. So this is where you get your Detroit's, your Chicago's, your New York's, Philadelphia, your Boston's. You know, the, the cities are growing because you've got to concentrate workers and, and your factories uh, to make them efficient. Um, it also laid the foundation for America to become the world's dominant economy, which we are to this day. So we become an industrialized society, think factories, become an urbanized society, think cities, which has huge social and political shifts, because now cities you know, are so important in running, running states. America becomes the foundation, based on the nation of America, to become the world's dominant economy, and also, big business and labor unions become established. And they both do. Labor unions fail often early. Uh, they get their power over time. It takes them, just like civil rights, it took them a long time to make gains. Because the system was rigged against them, and the people in the system that owned the system worked against them. But eventually, they got more and more power. Uh, and probably in the 60s and 70s, the power probably swung the unions. It's not there today. I don't think it's there today. So. All right, that's all we got. Test. So, we'll finish this for two. Um, do not open the test until you're ready to take the test. Once you open the test, you take the test.